Welcome everyone, my name is Brad with bradedgar.com and today what we're going to be doing is going over the customer table and how we can actually use that to determine where the majority of our customers are located by state um, or province or whatever it may be for that country that you're that you're dealing with. So uh, in order to do that what we need to do first is actually dump and get all of our data into uh, Excel for our customer table. Usually this is pretty simple and if you have reporting tools with your ERP um, systems you're able to actually extract that customer information fairly quickly so anyway in this case I'm not going to go over in details on how we do that because this is about pivot tables so um, we've got the information in here and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually select this information now which is going to allow us to then use and create a pivot table from the selection so in order to select all the information on our customer table tab here what we're going to do is if you go to A1 and you select A1 um, with your cursor and then if you use the control shift and then right arrow key that'll bring you all the way over to the end uh, and then the down arrow key still holding on to control shift will now essentially cover the entire selection area on the spreadsheet so now that we've selected everything if we were to go up uh, up here into the ribbon um, you'll be able to see here that we have an insert tab. The insert tab is where we're going to actually insert our pivot table. So over on the left hand side here we'll see that we have a pivot table right under file. There's a drop down. Once you click on that it gives you two options, a uh, pivot table and a pivot chart. In our case we're just going to be, be building a pivot table. So I'll select pivot table. It's going to bring up this create pivot table uh, field here, or form I should say. And now you'll notice down below that you can either create a new worksheet or you can use the existing worksheet to uh, build a pivot table. Because we don't have a lot of room here, I'm not going to put the pivot table on the same uh, on the same worksheet, so we'll create a new worksheet instead of using the existing here. So we've been brought now over to uh, a new worksheet where we have the pivot table options available to us. So down in the bottom, you'll notice here that we have sheet 3 all of these can be relabeled and by default they're named by a uh, sheet and then a number so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this and we're gonna just call this um, summary number of customers by state so now that I've renamed that um, it's gonna be easy for us to identify which tab we want to come to when we go to this, uh, when we open up this work, this worksheet or this spreadsheet, I should say. So now that that's in there, uh, one of the things that you can do just to also make it a little bit easier for you to know and access the information is you can actually use this tab color, and we can color that tab just like that. So if we were to be on the customer table or any of the other worksheets, you can tell that it's easy and very noticeable that we um, the summary of all this information is over on this tab. So. Let's go up into the pivot table, and from here what we're going to do is, the there are four regions on a pivot table. There's a report filter, there's column labels, there's row labels, and there's values. The row labels is essentially where you want to put in the field that you want to do the analysis on values for. So in our case, we want to be doing the analysis on state, and that's the data that we want to summarize for. So we want to say how many states um, how many customers are there, are there per state. So we want to count on the number of customer records for each state. So that being said, the row labels over here is the state, so that's going to read out all the states that actually exist within the customer table on the state field. So if we open this up, you can actually see that filter, and then you'll notice that this actually matches the other list over there. So heading back now over to the summary of uh, number of customers by state tab. We can now add some more information to our pivot table. So we don't need any report filters here because all we're doing is we want to have the state and then we want to have how many customers we had or do have for that current state count of them. So it's pretty simple to do that. All we're going to do is we're just going to grab the customer ID here and then that's going to generate a count of customer ID. Now the reason for this selecting the count of the customer ID, meaning if we had five customers 
uh, five records for five customers in Alabama, it's giving us, uh, in this case, it's seven. So if it seven customers uh, that actually live or are geographically located in the state of Alabama, they are actually showing up as a count, one of the counts, plus ones on that, um, on that field. So now what we're going to do is you can also look at the value field settings. So you can do a sum of the number of a specific field under Alabama, or you can do the average, or you can do a max, or a min, or a product. So, and there's several other options down here that are just, they're, they're not of importance in this actual tutorial, but I'm sure we'll get to them at one point. So, in this case, we want the count, because if we were to try and sum a text field, we would get values of zero. So I can show you that really quick, just to give you an idea. So you'll see that these are all zero values because it is a text field. So it has to be a number field in order for it to add it all up. So let's go back. We'll go back to value field settings. We're going to set it to count here. And then we're going to hit OK. All right, so now we know exactly how many customers we have in each state. Now that we have this information, one neat little trick that we can do in Excel is, is actually use conditional formatting to determine what our highest and the most um, what the top three states are in terms of customer base so the states that have the most customers um, so if you use the conditional formatting option here after I actually need to highlight the cells that I want conditional formatting done to and figure out which ones we want to do the top three on and that's these guys here so what we're now going to do is we'll go back over to conditional formatting I'm going to go top bottom rules and you can go top ten items so now what I'm going to do is actually just put the number three in here because I only want the top three customers and I want it in green because that's a little nicer and less obtrusive. So if I hit OK, it's going to now show us that. So we've got four customers instead of three showing up here. And the reason for that is because we have a tie in the top three number of customers field here uh, as a result of there being two states that have 13 customers total and that is Delaware and Idaho so now in order to put these in order and make it easier for us to actually see I can actually use this drop down here use more sort options and what I want to do is I'm going to go sort descending you can either sort by state or you can sort by the count of the customer ID field of course by state it's already by default ordered um, alphabetically from A to Z so what we're going to do is we're actually going to change that and we're going to count um, we're going to actually do a sort on the count of customer ID. And when we do that, that's actually going to bring us to um, showing the highest number of customers by state to the lowest customer number, lowest number of customers by state. So now that we've done that, that's pretty much uh, summed up what we were trying to tackle here. But based on this information now, um, you can do further analysis in determining why uh, District of Columbia is so much more successful than the um, state of California. And, you know, a couple things that you can consider, consider here is if it was uh, the salesman located in the District of Columbia, if he's doing a really good job, um, and that also goes for Iowa, Idaho, and Delaware, if they're doing a really good job and they're, they're following certain programs or they're doing certain things, then maybe it's time to get some training in place for the, those uh, located in California or Florida. Or it might be just that the hotter states are just not, uh, do not use your products as much as the demographic that's actually located in District of Columbia, Iowa, and Idaho. So if you do further analysis on that, you'll try and be able to, you'll be able to kind of realize why geographically you do not have um, as many customers um, in California as you do in District of Columbia. And then you can also kind of tailor sales programs to promote successful districts that you know you have a demographic for. So um, this has been a tutorial for bradedgar.com. I appreciate you guys coming. Uh, and I hope that if you have any questions, you can post them down uh, in the comment section of this, this blog post. Uh, again, I appreciate your time and thanks again. Bye.